Uh, today we are going to the, the presentation is called Calibration of Portable Niche with Intact Roots uh, Can Predict Dry Matter of Cassava in the Field. The idea of this uh, exercise or this, this uh, test is try to use the, the portable niche quality spec uh, for the breeders because sometimes it's difficult in the in the field to to have the, the the dry matter of the of the samples and when this equipment we are going to have uh, the the portable equipment and we can go to the field and uh, with the with the spectra that we obtain in 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 the field we can do the we can do the the prediction okay then uh, the first step, like I said, uh, uh, theory was like a uh, one year ago. Uh, we worked with the same samples that we use in the in the in the bench top uh, niche normal, and uh, we use mass sample that we uh, take take a different routes from every genotype and do the mass and take in the capsules that we use for the niche. Stop, and we did the spectra with the quality spec. For this exercise that we did it the, the last year, we used three population uh, of the field. Uh, so population, the, the more population have with beta carotene, then we use uh, one population with 48 samples, 222 samples, and the other with low carotene because when we see the if one C1, uh, we don't have to, we didn't have too much samples uh, with low carotene. Then we take another sample with low carotene to obtain a good bar good uh, variability of the of the data. Uh, we use these capsules to 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 take the the spectra, and we continue with the analysis of spectral analysis like uh, normally we we do. Uh, then we use the, the PCA and obtain the, the malanoid distance. Uh, we take like a pre, like a limit for the malanoid distance. And uh, this was uh, all layers of the, of the spectra. And we did it the RMS because we, we, we did the, the reading of two uh, spectra per sample. Then we use the RMS and we obtain two uh, outliers for the, the the big variance in the in the spectra. Okay. Uh, when we when when this spectra and the data of the laboratory, we try to do a different a calibration, different equations, and we obtain a good a, a equation for dry matter total carotens and beta, beta carotens for these samples. We obtained the RPD of, uh, for dry matter of, of seed, that is a, a, a good RPD for, the, for, the, uh, for calibration. For uh, carotens total, uh, we obtained 4.8, and for beta carotens, 4.7. And this is a, a, a good RPD when we are doing the calibration. When we do, the validation, uh, we obtain these this results for dry matter and for beta carotene. Then uh, part of the, of the samples that we did the, the spectra, uh, we did the validation with 67 uh, uh, samples for uh, dry matter and 61 samples for uh, beta carotene. Then we can see here, we can see here that we obtain a good slope in the correlation and with a, a variation with the with the, with this correlation. Sorry, this is the slope or the data, the difference in, between the data close to one, and the correlation is close to one two, and this is very good correlation. And the RPD of the validation was four point two one. That is a good uh, RPD two for validation. Uh, for correlation of beta carotene, we obtain two, the slope one, it's very, very good, and the correlation 0.95. The RPD two is very, very good, uh, 
4.59. Okay. Then we can uh, like uh, uh, say we 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 can say that the with the mass sample the 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 quality spec works, but uh, the idea is try to to predict with the samples intact. Then the the net exercise that we did was to take uh, the the root uh, made to to cut in the proximal and distal and try to 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 take a spectra in the different zones because for example with the with the yellow cassava you can see that we can obtain like a different color zones yeah in the white cassava is more difficult but this uh, is, is is normal because the root is very variable uh, in the distal and the proximal uh, zones then we read the spectra in one part like uh, this, we call external. The other spectra was in this part, we call the middle. And the other zone to take the, to read the, the spectra was the central part, close to the fiber. Then these samples, when we obtain the, the spectra, we did the mass and the, the predict in the, in the niche uh, of benchtop. This tribe was with beta carotene, total carotene, and dry matter, and the samples uh, matched in the for for the prediction. Then, when uh, when we did this spectra, we obtained the RMS. Okay, then we take three spectra in, for example, in the in the proximal part, three spectra: one in the in the external, one in the center, close to the fiber and one in the middle, in the zone of the middle of this, of this part. And in the distal, we take two, the three part, the three zones in, in the distal. Then we do different uh, comparisons between the, the spectra to check what is the variation. Then we have here, distal for proximal means that we are uh, doing the RMS between this, this lecture uh, reading in the in the external and this external then the rms of this is the variation between these two points here we have to the variation between between central point and central point of the distal and proximal and we have to the difference between middle uh, of the distal point the distal part and the middle of the of the proximal part. Then we can see what is the RMS. We hear aquí, we can hear the, the average, and we have a, a like a, a variation, okay? A big variation. When we uh, see uh, here, we can we take the spectra of the proximal and we did it a uh, average. Okay, and they did it average in the same in the same uh, piece of cassava. We did the, the average of this and the average of this, and we obtained the RMS between that that average. Then we can see too that we have a big difference with the RMS, uh, a lot of variation. When we are comparing, we are comparing with the mass sample. That is the exercise that we did it before. Then, when we check this 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 RMS between the intact uh, spectra and the mass sample, we can see uh, a big variation in the RMS. Where this is something that we want we want to 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 do is take in the same point two spectra without, uh, without move the, the, the equipment, the, the quality spec. Then we see that we have a, a difference too in the same point. And we check that uh, the, the temperature of the source uh, uh, play like a, 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 a role here, because if we let 
the, the, the source, the, the, the equipment. In the same point, the temperature is going to, to change the, the spectra too. Then with this, with this uh, exercise, we check that the, vari the more variation of the RMS is between the central uh, uh, spectra, yes? Then we take the decision that no use this, this spectra here. Then we take the decision that use the external part, the external zone and the middle zone in the phases of the proximal and distal. Okay, then with this, uh, this year, we try to make a, a protocol for the measure. Then we can see here what, what is the, the, the proposed. The proposed is to take, uh, choose a one root with good size from a region of type to take a, a, a good zone to, to, to do the, the spectrum. Uh, could the proximal part uh, first, the, the proximal part so, um, um, carefully because we need like a flat surface to obtain a good spectrum. Acquire three spectra in the surface. Then in, in this case, we use external, external and medium. And then when we finish to, to do this spectra, we cut the distal part. We are going to obtain something like this. And in the in the pro, in the pro, in the distal part, we are going to do middle middle external, okay? To do uh, some like a, a comparison between three um, and two spectral for proximal and distal part. And in this sample that we obtain of the center of the of the root, we measure the dry matter of the resulting uh, central piece of root, okay? We obtain the dry matter of this part. Then uh, it is the idea that take the, the, the spectra in these in this zones. The population that we use uh, was a diversity population uh, this year. Uh, this, this population had 269 uh, genotypes. This is coming from Momil, North Coast, uh, from Colombia. But we select only 242 uh, samples for the quality spec because we need a good size uh, to obtain good spectra in, the, in this area, in the area uh, proximal and distal. Then we use 242 plots, one root per genotype or per, or per plot, and we did it say six spectra. We obtained 1,452 spectra, and we did the dry matter of the 242 plus that we select, uh, the, the one piece that the central piece, and we did the two repetitions. We obtained 484 dry matter value. Then uh, we can see here like a, a, a part we did the, the dry matter of the several roots of the same genotype. Then we can see here that the difference between the only one root and the, and the, the midst of the several roots of the same genotype don't have the same, uh, the same, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. thank you, yeah. A distribution we have we don't have the, the same distribution then that is something that we need to, to think in in the future like have we obtained six, six spectra three scans by proximal and three scans by distal we try to do the difference or the rms between the Average of the three spectra of the proximal uh, and the average of the distal, the three spectra and the distal. Then we can see here that for three scans, we obtain like a the similar uh, close to the, 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 the average of the RMS for four scans. Yeah, but we can see here that we have more variation. Yeah, this is some, some uh, limit that. Sometimes we use for, for check 
all the all the all the RMS data. Okay. Then we can see here the spectra and the PCA. Uh, the spectra for for this quality spec go from 350 nanometers to 200 2,500 nanometers. The PCA we can check here two population uh, doing the PCA of this of this spectra. Uh, the the green the green uh, points the green uh, samples is the yellow cassava and the white sun and the and the white uh, point uh, points is a uh, white cassava. Then for for do the, the 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 calibration that we want to do with the intact spectra, we want to use we want to to do two options, average of cis spectra or average of four spectra because we need to check how many spectra we need from every piece of root that we are doing. Then every spectra spend 50 seconds with chain of position and the acquisition with the quality spec. Then this is far important for the for the work in the in the field or in the lab. With this spectra, we are going to spend 1.5 minutes in in, in average uh, taking the, the, the spectra. And for four spectra, we are going to have like a one minute. This is red. This is reduced like uh, the thirty percent of the of the of the uh, doing doing the spectra sampling doing the, the spectra. Okay, then that is something that we need to think in the in the in the future. For the equations, we use uh, one hundred ninety three samples, and for the validation we use uh, 49 samples. Then uh, we did the calibration with the average of the cis spectra for every uh, piece of, of, of cassava. And we obtain with this equation, with this segment, and this math, uh, one RPD of 3.1 for cis spectra. And the for the spectra, the best equation was this, with 2.65 uh, RPD. Then we use this this uh, this equation and this equation for different quantity of spectra to do the validation. Like we use 49 samples for the validation. Then we can see here the prediction with all calibration data without outlier with with all layers, okay? Then we can see how it predict with the same data used for calibration. And we can see here with the external validation. We can see here that we have a good slope, 1.05 and a correlation of 0.89. It's not so bad because we are working with the intact parts. And the RPD of validation is 2.68. For reading, I think that is not uh, a problem. For validation with four spectra, I was uh, I was expecting like a, a result uh, a little bad, but I don't know if it's the the random maze of the sample for validation. But we obtain in the calibration a, a good a good slope close to 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 one, the a good correlation close to nine, but in the validation it was uh, better that in the uh, calibration with this spectrum, okay? But in the future, we need to, to check more equations or to check what happened with, with just four or obtain another group for, valid, for, for external validation. And I think that we need to, to check this, but uh, this is very good. <laughs> if we need only need four spectra, it's, it's much better. Okay, then for the next steps, uh, we are we are going to to do different uh, experiment uh, with the quality spec and one of the the exercise we need to what what we need to do is how many reads with the quality spec to predict the value of a plot because we know that the one root have a lot of variation, uh, one plan have a lot of variation in the root and one plot have 
a lot different uh, between the plant and the root. Then we need to, to, to check how many roots we can uh, use to predict the value of a plot. Uh, we are going to use the, the next trial is uh, beta carotene and total carotene and dry matter uh, from the uh, uh, harvest from parental of breeding and F1C1 that is from beta carotene. And we are going to use intact fees. The idea is take like uh, in the protocol, the, the central part of the, the route that we are going to use. And the, the idea is to do the, the collect the spectra and predict the value with the, with the niche of Benstot and HPLC. And with the portable niche, we are going to, call, we are going to collect the spectra and, and try to do the, the calibration to the, predict the values. Uh, the idea too is compare the correlation between the different uh, predictions that we can obtain with the with this the, with the, the two two near. And this is uh, some conclusions. Uh, the intact cassava work for prediction of dry matter. Okay. Uh, at more tries to the data, we need more data for for obtain a, a good a, a better. A equation and to do different uh, like uh, 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 research what happened if we use more or less uh, roots. Uh, the advantage, the, the big advantage of the use of the quality spread is not necessary to match the sample in this case is, is worse. Uh, just do a cut as smooth as possible to obtain a flat surface like uh, here in the, in the pictures. And if in in that in this in, when when we use this equipment, we are not going to use the the need or not going to to need the, the to send samples from from North Costa to Otsia or from any place. Okay, uh, that is all. Thanks for your attention, and I hope that I can understand something. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Luis, for this very useful and detailed presentation. Uh, so I, I, th I think it's very promising uh, the, the potential to not, not have to send the samples, the routes to the lab, but just to take the equipment and to go to the different locations where we have fields uh, in Colombia or other, other countries and to be able to record the data and get results directly in the field. That, that can save a lot of time and a lot of expenses in, uh, in sending samples and shipping samples around. Uh, we have about uh, five, between five and 10 minutes of questions. So uh, I would invite the floor to either uh, raise your hands and ask questions or put your questions in the chat. Uh, thank you. Maybe we can start with Fabrice. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Luis. Very, very nice uh, presentation and very efficient work. And uh, you, you, you have done exactly what you, you have to do. So it's very interesting. Uh, I have one question uh, regarding your equations. When you use six spectra, maybe you can uh, explain again what is exactly the six spectra are. What are the six spectra and the four spectra? But I'm not sure to to have got it. And if you look at your equation, uh, one time you use the full sigma. And for the second one, when you use four spectra, you use only uh, an IR uh, sigma, no? Correct? Yes, exactly. So, yeah. So this this is interesting because you have uh, white and yellow, and maybe uh, of course uh, what you see on the population it's due to color, and due to the visible part of the spectra. So uh, what what is uh, the six spectra? What are the six spectra exactly? Yeah, the six spectra is, uh, sorry, here. Okay, uh, the CIS spectra is, we take the, the central part and we did three spectra in the, the, the proximal, the proximal uh, part, okay? We take mm. one spectra in external, here in other point external and one point in middle, okay? Okay, okay. Yes, in different point of external and middle, and to 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 do like a, something different in the distal, we take 
two points middle and one point external. That is the cis spectra. We use the average of this cis spectra. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for four spectra, we use only one point external and one point middle in the proximal and one point external and one point middle in the distal. Then we did the average of this spectra to do the calibration and validation and prediction. It's okay, sorry. Uh, yes, okay. So, so you don't, you, it's, uh, it's a new spectra. When you do the four spectra, it's new spectra. Or uh, it's uh, four spectra from the six spectra. Four spectra? Yes. Yes. When, is it, is it selected uh, from the six? We... Is it coming from the six spectra, the four, one, or it's uh, other spectra? Uh, yeah. Repeat uh, for this. Uh, you, you have done six spectra, okay? Yes. Then you, you have done again four spectra or you take the four spectra out of the six? Uh, okay. Can you hear for me? The calculation? Because, I, for, because I don't understand it uh, exactly, uh, Fabrice. Luis, sh shall I answer? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So we, we take six spectra. And then out of those six, we we select four of them to do the analysis with only four spectra. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's the same CS spectra. We we select four. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so maybe maybe question? you can try you can try by a PCA analysis to to yes. to look at the representativity of the four yeah. spectra regarding the, the remaining two spectra. Mm -hmm. when yeah, you, yes, when, Farid. when you say okay, because we need to, to understand why with four spectra, you, you, you found something uh, uh, a little bit better, but some different in, in terms of equations uh, when you say that it's coming from the six spectra. So we need to, to, to check this. So maybe you can check it by PCA analysis. To yeah. compare, uh, you do a PCA with the four spectra and you project on the PCA, the two remaining spectra, just yes. to check to, to check if uh, there is something uh, uh, in variability uh, in the spectra. But it's fine. Eh? Uh, it's uh, interesting. Uh, another question is uh, regarding your selection for uh, validation and uh, learning. Ah, yes. how, how you have the need? I, I I use the 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 tool in the WNC select. So you use select on the on the population on the whole populations. Uh, you select uh, sample the according to according to uh, twenty percent. So you select yes. a number of samples. So according to the distance uh, neighborhood distances. Uh, I I use the yes the the Mahalanobis distance. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Neighborhood mm -hmm. distances. So, okay. Right. Yeah. So what we can do maybe you. Uh, you can go further in your analysis by trying to separate white and, and uh, yellow oh, cassava okay. and do a calibration only with the yellow for dry matter and try to predict the white. Okay. Just to see, just to see uh, it's uh, an independent validation and you will see if you have a very high uh, variability coming from the color in your calibration coefficient. So it, it could be uh, nice to try this. And okay. the next step, you, you will use this for carotenoid and, uh, and uh, beta caroten and uh, total caroten. So uh, how you, you plan to do it? You are, how are you going to do if my advice is, as we have a good equations for uh, caroten and uh, beta caroten using the force instrument on match sample, what you can do is doing the spectra with ISD, match the sample and predict the sample using the FOSS and use the predicted value as lab value for calibrate. Uh, calibrating the ISD, you will save time. Yeah. We don't need to compare, uh, my advice is that we don't need to compare uh, ISD and XAS. What you have okay. to do is to develop an equation for uh, ISD because uh, the future is ISD. So uh, my advice is to use a FOSS for predicting and sure. use the predicting values as uh, reference value to, to calibrate the ISD. Like yeah. this, you don't have to do laboratory values or maybe a few of them to just to check uh, some few value, maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, 20, yeah. 30 value, just to check. Okay, 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 Faris, thank you for the, for the suggestions. So, thank you for the work and very nice work and thank you for the presentation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Fabrice, for the good suggestions. 
Uh, so we have another hand, uh, Asfat. Uh, do you want to ask a question or a comment? Yeah. Yes, I have one question. Maybe I'm <clears throat> not clear with uh, <clears throat> the process, but thank you for a nice presentation. Um, for the dry matter, you used a, a two replication. Yes. And and uh, for the spectra, are you have you used the same tubers that you you used for the for the 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 dry matter uh, the, the 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 routine uh, determination and. Um, also for the spectra reading, and that means the spectra has also been data collected from two, two replication. Is that correct? No, for the spectra, we we use like a, sometimes cis spectra and sometimes for the spectra. Yes, for but do the how many tubers? Uh, one tuber, one root for for every genotype. And Not for replication. Uh, no, for genotype, no, because we did it the, the dry matter for this piece only, okay? For that piece, no, no, we don't, uh, the, 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 with this piece, we uh -huh. did the spectra and we did the dry matter of this piece. For the, all the genotype, we did it too with, diff, with several roots, but you know that the one root is not a, a, a significance a, of the of the of the all the plant or of the genotype. Yes, I understand. Okay, okay. Now I get. I thought uh, you have just randomly selected um, two uh, tubers per genotype, and then you took both the spectra data and also those the the dry matter yeah. determination on the same the yeah, same yeah. Uh, route so that you. Yeah, that is going to that, that is the next step. We are going to use a uh, three or four a uh, root for every genotype, and uh -huh. to do the, the the analysis of the uh, the the different spectra and the different dry matter in the in the roots. Okay. Okay. But thank you. This is like an introduction for the use of the quality spec. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Asfat. Uh, in, in the chat, we have uh, a question from Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, would you like to ask your question or shall I read it? Yeah, thank, I can ask. Thank you. Thank you, Luis, for excellent presentation. Thank you, Thierry. Um, okay. Actually, what um, we are using ASD, we know how heavy it is. And um, I just want to, um, Luis, to share the experience. You know, when you have a large number of sample and you are trying to scan six spectra, six times, uh, and you are holding it, how did you manage the evidence of the, of the ESD? Thank you. Okay, the, the, the question, Thierry, is, is we have experience with the ASD? Uh, yeah, because the, the, the ASD quality spec is heavy. So do you get tired when you measure many samples? How, how, how how to handle the heavy equipment. Yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, I, I, I don't know what, what, to, what to say about it, but uh, yes. But you, uh, you, the, the, the quality spec is, uh, is on the table, correct? Yeah. Yeah, no. that's, that's, that's exactly what I want to, because yeah. the way it showed the picture, you know, using somebody, you know, scanning it, it's as if you are holding it. And if you have a large number of samples, it's not feasible. <laughs> you need three hour fitness that, uh, as they, you know. Uh... <laughs> it's a good fitness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes, so the, the what, what I want to, what, that, yeah, it's what I want to. Yes, yeah. it's important, Emmanuel, what you say, yeah. because yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, it's not only a question of uh, to be tired to do it, but it's also yeah. a question to be stable to do the spectra. So you, you, I mm -hmm. agree with you. Maybe we need to do a support to fix the root and to fix the SD sample and to put the root on the SD sample uh, instrument. Uh, as we did in, uh, in uh, IIT, you remember, we, we fixed yeah. the instruments yeah. and we, we put yeah. the root on the instrument to do the measurement. Yeah. It's a question yeah. of uh, stability and to be sure that, uh, yes, I agree. It's a, it's an important point. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. I understand. Thank you, Paris. I understand. <laughs> Thank you, Emmanuel. 
<laughs> yes, yes, I'm a new too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but can you can you do that on the field also? <laughs> like carry this heavy equipment in the field. Yeah, actually, yes, that yeah. is what that is what we we are saying that um, we we need to mention it to design because when you have large number of samples, it's not easy to hold it, and then you'll be scanning maybe four spectra um, or six spectra, you know, per per root. It's mm -hmm. going to be heavy, you know, they won't harm holding it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are saying that there is going to be a stability. Yes, in the field, it's easy. You get is something stable, then you can place it on it because it has a flat. That handle has a flat um, a surface where it can stand. So we did that. That is during our training in Nigeria. I just want to mention it so for 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 the audience to know that um, you still you can design it to make it faster, to make it easy, ergonomic. But as it is now. When we want to use for large number of samples, it's not easy. So it's applicable in the field as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Can I say something? What about the portable one? Can the portable one be used for the same purpose? Uh, the portable one? Yeah. yeah. This, this, yeah. You know, there are various, um, various uh, spectrometer, and uh, yeah. which, which is, yes, we have many one. We yeah. have extra, yeah, yeah. So it depends on the range of the wavelength. Okay. Uh, so yes, you know, there's one um, the breeding unit in IT is using, and uh, yes, that was, yeah, that which was is, the reason which why is, I asked. Yeah, but the 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 range is 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 is, is not as big as this one, and that one is also working for dry matter effectively. Yeah, so it's okay, but this this okay. this one. Is more robust and there is can take a lot large, large number of samples. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it you. works on inter truth, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. I say something? Thank you. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So we're talking about holding this um quality spec in the field. So I think um when this um equipment first came, when um I think it was Uko Ikogo Ugochuku, he used it. I he really he carried it like with his hand to take all the samples. So I think it's doable, but it's really stressful. Yeah, but um, so when I started taking my own data, we had to use table. So we got a, a shed and we used a, a flat table and we collected our samples outside the field. But, but within the field area, I don't know how to say it. So there, there was a shed and then we put the spectrum on the table and then collected our data but taking it in the field is very doable yeah that's just my contribution okay thank you thanks a lot for the feedback okay uh, i have a question please one more question maybe we take one last question and then okay we'll um to... sorry perhaps i <clears throat> perhaps i missed uh, the description of the process at the beginning did you conduct this for both uh, yellow and white uh, cassava varieties or you just selected only one type of uh... okay in this case we use yellow and white cassava but we did only for dry matter in this moment okay Okay. The reason why I asked is because uh, <clears throat> from uh, most literature review, uh, it's been found that yellow, on the average, yellow varieties seem to have significantly uh, lower uh, dry matter compared to white uh, cassava varieties, even in multi-locations. Okay. Yes. And that is something that suggests uh, Fabrice that is try to, to do the calibration with only yellow cassava and only white cassava to check what happened with the, the different calibration. Uh, okay. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we, uh, we, we have more questions coming. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure what, uh, what to do if, if people need to go to other meetings, feel free. Uh, but I'd like to invite Claire uh, and then Thomas, Thomas to, to ask their questions. Uh, Claire, you, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. So, uh, very nice 
presentation, Luis. My question is okay. whether you have tried to look at the central part of the root. Is it possible that the central part would represent the average of the distal and the proximal, and you could save some readings? Uh, yeah, that is another uh, another thing that we need to to check because we need to check if the central part for with this spectra uh, can uh, like uh, is significant for all the roots, and then we need to use different roots too to to try to 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 check if if significance for all the plot. But yes, that is something that we need to do. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. And, Actually, uh, can I do a follow up to that question? Uh, okay, quickly. Really, uh, yeah, I just want to add to the answer given to Claire. Yeah, definitely from our own experience from IT, we clearly see there's a dif difference in the central and the, the proximal, the middle and the distal. So yeah. since uh, Luis has mentioned that he's going to explore it more, so it's difficult to use the central that will represent the whole route. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Thomas? Is, is I, I, um, uh, maybe, maybe I miss it uh, in between, but I, I've, I'm not, it's not very clear for me why beta carotene uh, has now priority. What about other traits? Um, what, what, what is coming next after dry matter? Okay, the, the, yes. the net is to, to, to continue, to continue uh, doing different uh, 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 tests to, to obtain like a, a, a better equations for dry matter. And we are going to use the, the, the beta carotens and, and uh, uh, trites because we have in this moment in the, in the, in the field and we are going to, to do the, the analysis of this. But uh, yes, we need, we need, we need to, to improve. To improve all the equation and uh, and and to improve the like I all say that we need to check if we can do only or less is uh, spectra and all this. Uh, okay, Thomas. Yeah, but what about our uh, favorite cooking time and all this stuff? Yes, uh, we are obtaining all these this data. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we are obtaining all this data of these of these samples. Uh, sometimes we use the water absorption. Sometimes we have a uh, cooking cooking time. We have cyanide, uh, and then we are going to try to correlate yeah. with, with this with this uh, trite. Okay. Okay, but well, this would be this would be the next step for my understanding, and not so much beta carotene. Okay. Anyway, okay. Thank you. Yes, okay. exactly. It's next steps. Yeah. For for cooking quality in particular, we there is still some way to go. The the prediction is not as straightforward as uh, dry matter and carotenoids. Yeah, okay, I know, but that's our goal. Or that's the goal of the project. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, th thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, have a good weekend. Uh, I think we have just one last remaining question in the chat uh, from Dominique. So as uh, last but not least, uh, Dominique, you have the floor. Luis, Luis I, I don't understand very well how you evaluate the dry matter bit in the same genotypes, how many plants you use, how many roots. I don't understand very well the, the graph you present. Can you explain? Okay, this? Yes, because okay. it's 20, 20 to 50% of dry matter I see the density. I don't understand very well. <laughs> okay, the, this graph is is showing uh, we have the the dry matter or the 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 piece of root that we are analyzing. Yes, this is the the, the red the red density, and this is all the the roots uh, meets for the dry matter of the genotype that we that we harvest. Okay, this is only to 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 show that. The, the piece that we are doing is not a significance to predict all the, the dry matter that this genotype or that or that plot. 
Okay. But, sorry, uh, uh, I, I don't understand what is density. Are you talking about gravimetric methods? Or? No, no, no. Density is the, the graphic. The graphic. This is a, a, a density is graph. The frequency. It's a, the frequency. Yes. It's a how many? How many sample, how, many? how many routes? Okay. Uh, in this in this case, we use uh, seven seven routes per genotype, and uh, uh, for for the analysis. Okay, for the several in this by matter of several several routes. And uh, you evaluate dry matter in oven and in the with the NIF, so you predict or uh, I really don't understand. This is the, this uh, is in uh, in dry matter in oven. Okay, this is dry matter in oven, and this is the dry matter of the piece in oven that we use to do the spectrum. What? Okay. Dominique, what is showing here is that he has done uh, dry matter for. A lot of genotypes, the, the the blue one. So the distribution. This is on yes. like a frequency uh, density is a frequency divided by the uh, the scale of the interval you use for the classes. So this is uh, for the blue one is for the, all the genotypes they analyze in the lab, and the red one it's only the genotypes they analyze for the NIR calibration. Uh, what I want to say here, uh, Luis, that is not. A, it's not important this uh, it's important to have done this graphic but uh, the different you see is not important what is important is that your uh, selection for dry matter for calibration covers the same range as the lab uh, yes. the, the general population so exactly. uh, your 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 calibration can be used for the whole population because you you cover the whole range mm -hmm. exactly okay thank okay. you thank you dominique thank you fabrice Well, uh, we, we are over time already, so uh, I want to thank you, Luis, uh, for your excellent presentation. Uh, and thank you to everyone for a very lively uh, discussion and many, many questions. And uh, well, we, we wish you a good weekend and uh, see, you, see you soon either on the internet or in Paris.